is a beautiful night in downtown Cincinnati. We welcome you to All-Star Week here on Fox Sports Ohio and a big three days leading up to the All-Star break as a Pittsburgh Pirates right on the heels of the Reds in the National League Central, a very tight four-team race. Lock up for the first of three, and you take a look inside the National League Central. The Reds two and a half back. The Pirates three and a half back. The Brewers and the Cardinals begin a weekend series tonight as well. And hi again, everybody, alongside the Cowboy. Jeff Brantley and Jim Day. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball. Well, if you're going to start a series, and now that he's healthy again, not a bad thing for the Red Legs to have big Matt Latos taking the ball. You know, Tom, every time Matt Latos has taken a start over the last three times out, the velocity is starting to creep back up into that 92, 93 mile an hour mark. Not only getting the breaking ball in there, but the location down in the strike zone. That has been a huge key for Latos. When you can pitch without your best stuff and still put up numbers like he has, 22 innings, only 10 hits. Doesn't have the strikeouts like he had, but only two walks in those last three starts. All right, GS bringing the energy. Look at the numbers. Two walks, 12 strikeouts. Opponents batting 135 and very pitch efficient is Matt Latos, averaging 13 pitches per inning. Now this Pirates team, we know the story last year. They beat the Reds in a one-game playoff. They've been staggering along up until about the last month and a half, and now they're playing very good baseball, led once again by the reigning MVP, Andrew McCutcheon. <laughs> Anytime that this guy is on the field, Tom, it's not about the speed. It's about the bat. He can drive the ball out of the ballpark anywhere, whether it's down the right field line or whether it's down the left field line. RBIs right now the most in the big leagues since the 1st of June. So the Reds will try and slow down the Cutchin and the Pirates, but the injury bug again begins to flare up for the second time with the Reds. Jim Day will bring you up to speed when we return. of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Arg.
It's time to beat the pirates, men. Remember, you can only play nine. On the field, you can't play ten. Red legs take the pirates silver and gold because beating McCutcheon never gets old. So ready your bats and raise your mast. That means you, Ludwig, Cozart, Hamilton, and the rest of the cast. Oh, forecast looks pretty good, too. So you've got two choices. You can walk the plank, let's go, or enjoy the game on Fox Sports Ohio. <laughs> Tim Hedrick, you never seem to disappoint on a hot and steamy baseball kind of night at Great American Ballpark. I'm Jim Day. Unfortunately, this has been a series of injuries, and the Reds have been fighting through it. Started the season with eight men on the disabled list. We know about Joey Votto being there, and we just got word that Skip Schumacher, after crashing into the wall, will go on the seven-day concussion list. Donald Lutz up from Louisville. The biggest blow this week, Brandon Phillips, Wednesday night, going after a ground ball. Landed awkwardly on his glove hand. It turned out to be ligament damage in his thumb. He had surgery today, deemed successful, out at least six weeks. A major blow to Cincinnati. And another one that Brian Price and the Reds have to fight through. But Brian Price says, onward we go. No one else is going to feel sorry for us. We deal with what we have here, and I'm happy with what we have here. You know, Brandon being out means it's more opportunity for Santee and, and for uh, for Skip to go out there and play some second base and do some things at that position, and that in turn creates more opportunities in the outfield for the other guys uh, to play as well. I, I mean, I like what we have here. I just want to make sure coming uh, uh, out of the All-Star break that w the guys that we do have here um, are as healthy as possible, and that, that'll be the biggest challenge. It's a big old hang with them. It's another Central Division showdown. It's the Pirates and the Reds. Tom Brenneman and the Cowboy Jeff Brantley are next with lineups and first pitch on your home for Reds Baseball, Fox Sports Ohio. Sports Ohio brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. It is an absolutely picture-perfect weather night for baseball in Cincinnati. And the Pirates batting order under manager Clint Hurdle presented by Meyer. Polanco, the rookie in right field, Cincinnati native, an all-star, Josh Harrison in left, another all-star, McCutcheon in center. 
Nadia Walker healthy again at second. Russell Martin healthy again behind a plate with Pedro Alvarez down at third. A latter third of Gabby Sanchez, Jordy Mercer, and left-hander Jeff Locke. On the mound for the Reds, only a sixth start since coming off the DL, has thrown the ball extremely well after a great year last year, is right-hander Matt Latos. Keep it down, move it around. You'll see two different breaking balls from Latos, and you'll see spurts of that 93, 94 mile an hour fastball that we're used to seeing from Matt Latos. But the big key for him, even without his best stuff, he's still been able to get outs consecutive fashion. If you're wondering about Latos in his career against the Pirates, unbelievably, this guy started five games against the Pirates last year, and my, oh, my, did he dominate them virtually every start. The only time they had any success against him was his last start, but the Reds won that game in 10 innings in late September. The Reds on defense presented by Ford. What with all the injuries, Heisey will start in right. Bruce goes over to first. Santiago for the injured Brandon Phillips at second base. And the Reds again announcing, as you heard a short while ago, Skip Schumacher, another of the walking wounded. He has been placed on a seven-day DA disabled list due to a concussion. So Phillips out. Bailey had to leave the start yesterday. And now Schumacher. Billy Hamilton, the good news, obviously, back in the lineup here tonight. Gregory Polanco, the rookie right fielder, looks at a fastball strike. Says field and culvert, the home plate umpire, and this one underway. The rest of the judiciary tonight, Manny Gonzalez down at first. Tom Woodring, the umpire at second, and Brian Knight works at third. Polanco playing in his 30th game since they brought him up from the minor leagues. He has been their number one prospect. I mean, the guy they've been talking about for a couple of years now, and they figured, why not now? Well, he's hit very well against right-handed pitching, Tom, the 329 hitter. And that's all the Reds are going to throw at him. But left-handers, they give him a whole lot of trouble. Waves through that one, one and two. Polanco got off to a blazing start, and the Reds saw him as part of that when everything that left his bat made a very, very loud noise. Now, for the first time, and we hear it all the time, the cliche about adjustments. They want to see what you do, and then once they see what you do well, they try and find the spots where maybe you're not as good. And we'll see how it plays out for him because he's been scuffling, knock on wood, of late. Swing and a miss, and he's gone on strikes to begin the game. Tom, this is not the same swing we saw from Polanco in Pittsburgh. Everything was the knob coming to the plate. As you see, the cut fastball, and he swings right over the top of it. That had a bigger break than Matt probably wanted to have, but he had him way out in front. So now the young man from Princeton High School and the University of Cincinnati on his way to the All-Star game is Josh Harrison. He's played virtually everywhere on the field and finally getting a chance to play regularly in the major leagues. And boy, when you get that chance, if you're not a number one or a number two round draft pick, you better grab it by the horns when you get the chance. And that Josh Harrison has done. It's an incredible story. Injuries happen. You get your opportunity. You better make the best of it. Got his entire family, so many friends here tonight, and they'll all be making that trek to Minneapolis, brother, on Tuesday night for the All-Star game. Good for him and good for them. Popped up in a short left, staring right into the sunshine this time of the night. Is Ryan Ludwig, but he's been down that trail before and two gone to begin the first inning. But if you had to make your game plan early for Matt Latos, he'd want to face McCutcheon every time with nobody out or with two outs and nobody on. Now McCutcheon is a guy who the Reds by and large have owned. In his career, a career 259 hitter, but that includes the 385 this year. For whatever reason, all of a sudden, McCutcheon has just brought it to the table night after night when these two teams have played this year. 
has 15 hits and 39 at bats including three home runs. One and one on Andrew McCutcheon the National League's reigning most valuable player leading to the Pirates who to the postseason to a winning record for the first time in 20 years plus their last winning season had been in the year of 1992 before they won one of the two wild cards in the National League beat the Reds in the one game playoff and wound up losing to the Cardinals in the division series. You know, most guys Tom that are power hitters are big bulky guys at the plate. This guy is a speedster. He could very well hit in the leadoff spot. Hits for average and power all over the place. Latos rocks in the one two pitch. Foul away. We'll do it again. Walker having to duck underneath that one in the on deck circle. The Pirates have done what you're supposed to do over the better part of the last four or five weeks, and that's beat up on the teams that are not having good years. That came to a halt when they just left St. Louis as they lost three out of four there, but they had just trashed the Diamondbacks, the Mets, Tampa Bay, the Cubs. Fly ball to right, and Latos a good start. Mows him down in order. Reds are coming to bat against Jeff Locke when we return. After Matt Latos delivered a 1 2 3 top of the inning, the lineup brought to you by Meyer. Hamilton back in the lineup. Cozart at short in the number two hole tonight. And Todd Frazier at third base. Bruce at first, Mesoraco catching Ludwig in left field. With a ladder third of Heisey and right, Santiago for the injured Brandon Phillips. Matt Latos on the mound. Jeff Locke got off to a great start last year, and the proverbial wheels fell off for this young man. He was left off of the postseason roster. And after beginning this year in the minor leagues, he's starting to pitch like he did the first half of last year. Well, his first start was a little bit rocky, but his last six starts, Tom, two and one with a 2.23 ERA. He pitched very well against the Reds in Pittsburgh, but their bullpen let him down. Right start against the Reds. He went six innings, allowed only three hits and two runs. And the one big difference with Locke this year than the guy who started to waver last year, apparently throwing more strikes. Fun and right at the first baseman. And that's an easy play. Oh, he missed him. How in the world did that happen? That is extreme agility by a former football player. That looked like he was heading into the secondary and evaded the free safety. Oh, well, he reached with a hand. And the ball wasn't in the hand. 
Of course, Clint Hurdle's going to make a very slow walk out there, and he'll turn around back into his dugout to see if he should uh, have him take a look at this on replay. You can't even do that in a Mercedes. Well, maybe be that. running 30 miles an hour and slam on the brakes and then quick cut left. You better be in an SL 550. <laughs> That's a straight whiff. <laughs> well, to score the base hit for Billy Hamilton, so now let the fun begin. The question is, Cowboy, how healthy is that hamstring that he tweaked a couple of nights ago? It was it not the lineup yesterday. Right <laughs> yeah, you just you just wonder if it was just a little bit of fear of Hamilton. Having a, a little bit of leg soreness, especially after playing that doubleheader and coming back, playing the next day. That was a lot of games in a very short period of time for the Reds. Well, now Zach Kozard moved up into that number two spot in the batting order with Brandon Phillips out of there. The Reds all year long have had to make so many alterations in their lineup. And that one is drilled in a deep left field down the line. And up against the wall. Billy running to third. They're going to win him around. Here comes a throw. Reds lead. One nothing. Zach Kozart right out of the gate tries to cut that fastball in on him and he almost hit it out of here. And your question about Hamilton's hamstring, I think he's high. I don't know the last time I've seen a ball hit directly down the left field line on a line that hit the wall, went directly to the left fielder, and a runner scored from first base. I don't think I've ever seen anybody evade a first baseman like Hamilton did either. This guy is so exciting. So exciting to watch. Now Frazier. And he takes off the inside corner. Ball one. Well, he has just electrified this Reds team. After a very slow start in the first couple of weeks of the year. His batting average, his on base percentage has gone up 20 points or more in every month in succession as this season has moved forward. And that, that's important, Tom, not only for the progression of Billy Hamilton, but when you're losing guys like Phillips, Votto, Bruce, Schumacher today, you got to have somebody that keeps that energy, keeps that flow, and that's what Hamilton's doing. Of course, here's another guy that's done that for the Reds. Oh, yeah. And Todd Wright as well. One and third. Nobody out. And it's up and in. Two and one to Frazier. 17 home runs and 48 runs batted in. If anything hit right at first or right at third, they would come to the plate. Ground ball back up through the middle. They're conceding the run. Two and two on Todd Frazier. See Locke start that curveball and then he'll follow it with a changeup more times than not. Start the curveball away, bring it to you. Start the changeup, middle away, and run it away from you. Frazier looking to drive in Kozai. Nobody out. And a one hopper at third, and Kozart breaking on the pitch. And he's in a rundown, still in a rundown, and they tag him out. I, you know, like a lot of fans, Jeff, I'm saying, why? With one out in the inning, why? Just got caught off the bank. That was a bad decision. Try to get that extra jump from third, but you've got to read where the ball is going. Well, we'll put a star by that one and see how that plays out as this game moves forward. Well, fortunately, Frazier got to second base. 
now Jay Bruce about it. Ten home runs, 41 runs batted in. Frazier out there at second with one out and ball one to Jay Bruce. Well, once more, the the topic of conversation comes up again, Cowboys. It did when Votto was injured in 2012. When Votto and Bruce were injured this year. Now with Phillips and Votto both out at the same time. What red will step up and do a little more, not than they're capable of doing, because that's impossible, but will step up and do more than they have done so far in the absence of Votto and Phillips. Now the guy that can carry this club, even with the other two, Phillips and Bruce, Phillips and Votto in the lineup is Jay Bruce. He has that kind of ability to carry a club two or three weeks at a time by himself because of the way he has to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Like a long look in getting the sign from his catcher Russell Martin. I took a nose dive down and in on Bruce and he came up empty one ball and two strikes. You can go two ways Tom as a hitter when you have injuries you can feel the overwhelming responsibility to try to drive in runs and if you do then you're going to swing at pitches that are out of the strike zone or you can become comfortable and say all right I'm just going to do what I can do and make it happen. Started two. did he go they appeal yes says Brian Knight Bruce out on strikes two away in the inning. Take a look at the Pirates on defense presented by your Ford dealers. They have Polanco, McCutcheon, Harrison, right center and left. They have Marte out on the bereavement list, losing a family member in the Dominican. So he's back with his family. Alvarez has had a rough year. Mercer, Walker, Sanchez, the rest of the infield. And they're thrilled to have Russell Martin back. Missed a lot of playing time this year. And many believe he is the heart and soul along with McCutcheon of this entire Pirates team. Now Mezzarocco, he takes ball one. Yeah, they lost Martin for a little while, lost Neil Walker to an appendicitis surgery. Seems like everybody's getting hit this day and age. But you got to play on. Devin at 305 has 15 home runs, 43 runs batted in. As you know, he's on his way to the All-Star game on Tuesday night. Along with teammates Todd Frazier, Aroldis Chapman, and Johnny Cueto. Although Cueto, should he make his start here on Sunday, will be unable to pitch. And the Reds are hoping that Alfredo Simon will be named to the All Star team. The National League's first and right now only 12 game winner, Adam Wainwright, an All Star, will have a chance to match that win total when he starts tomorrow. I think, in, in all honesty, the Reds could not say they would be where they are right now without. The performance of Alfredo Simon. It has been an all star performance. Two and one to Devin Mezzarocco. And they keep trying to come in, in, in. We have the the Cubs in town, and they had a little bit of success going there with Mezzarocco, especially the uh, the youngster who pitched Dallas Beeler. Tried to cut the ball in or run the ball in on Mezzarocco. Devin will swing at that pitch if it comes in off the plate. But if it starts in off the plate, he's going to let it go. Pull the string on him there, three and one, a change up. And that's a pitch they say Locke has thrown with greater success this year. This is his best pitch. That change up looks just like the fastball coming from the same arm slot. And as a hitter, you're always thinking fastball. Struck him out to end the inning. Reds get one but miss a chance for two. And at the end of one, they've jumped out in front. One nothing.
The one nothing lead after one here in Fox Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day. The Reds hope to continue their success not only against the Pirates, but against the National League Central. It's part of our Elk and Elk storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for serious injuries call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. These two teams have played each other ten times so far. And the Reds have won seven of those games. They've done it with better hitting because you see the numbers. But the big story is the starting pitching, which has been the backbone of Cincinnati. 6-0 record against the Pirates this year. And the team ERAs are way out of kilter in favor of the Reds. The Reds have also done very well against Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, and Chicago in 10 series versus those division rivals. The Reds are 9-0-1 in those series. Tom? Troy, the only team that's given them problems so far inside their division. They have lost all three series they have played against the St. Louis Cardinals. And they'll have three more of those remaining this year. They've got three against everybody, including this series tonight, with the exception of the Cubs. They only have two more against them. Neil Walker to lead it off. Matt Latos delivers outside and low. Ball one. Walker. Red hot coming into this series carries a 12 game hitting streak. He's gone deep five times in his last four games in this ballpark. So he loves hitting here. Walker is the type of hitter you either stay real soft or real hard in on his hands. That in between pitch, he'll leave the building. Joanno to Walker and Latos coming to the plate and it's in there strike. Clint Earl and the Pirates were really pushing Walker, who even with that appendicitis had emergency appendectomy operation, feeling he was deserving of a trip to the All-Star game. The leads all second baseman in the National League in home runs, second in on base percentage, third in RBIs and slugging percentage. But he is not one of the Pirates on their way to the All-Star game. They have three of them. They have Harrison, they have McCutcheon, and they have the reliever. It's actually Harrison was afforded the opportunity when Walker went on the disabled list to start playing on a regular basis, and he took advantage of it. You were talking about that earlier. The Reds have to have the same kind of production from their guys taking over for injured players. Walker gone swinging, and that left-handed reliever, by the way, going to the All-Star game. I failed to mention Tony Watson. Second strikeout for Matt Latos. He's retired the front four. Backdoor curveball, the slow one. And he gets Walker well out in front. Hard in, soft away. That brings Russell Martin to the plate. First pitch swinging in the air over near the Reds dugout, and that'll drift out of play. Martin injured his hamstring earlier this year and he started a little slowly after coming off the DL much like Walker did it for that matter but now all of a sudden both of those guys have been tearing it up and a big reason why the Pirates have played so well up until the road trip prior to coming here to Cincinnati Martin in his last 10 games a 371 batter Clint Erdl, what a job he's done in Pittsburgh no kid. I've never felt like you got a true barometer on what kind of a manager anyone would be when you're in Colorado. Right. He got Colorado the last time I checked to a World Series. And there were a lot of people that that still weren't so sure about Clint Hurdle. But my oh my, he got out of mile high altitude where it's just a, an entirely different managerial kind of a job than anywhere else in baseball. And has done an excellent job with this Pirates organization. And you're talking about a, a club that's limited financially. They've got a turnover in the roster. You've got young players coming to the big leagues, young pitchers. And they've, they've really had to piecemeal their starting rotation together and then do it again. Well, they're bringing Francisco Liriano off the disabled list. He is scheduled to pitch in the final game of this series against Johnny Cueto on Sunday. Garrett Cole was on the DL a long time. Lost came three back. Now he goes rotation. on the DL again. Oh, 
oh and two on Russell Martin. We'll let you know what's going on once they get started and they're about 45 minutes away from getting started tonight in Milwaukee where it'll be Joe Kelly coming back from injury against Giovanni Gallardo in the front game of that three game series two and two on Martin. Here's another team having to patch up that rotation boy another terrible outing by Shelby Miller yesterday he's been troubled with back spasms had to leave a start early a couple of turns ago well with injuries to Garcia and Waka what was 0 and 2 is now 3 and 2 fortunately for the Reds they've got all their guys intact and Simon is pitching as well as anybody in the league and he was scheduled for the bullpen Three and two now on Russell Martin. And a tapper. Nice play by Frazier. Got caught in between hops there and just stuck that chest out and knocked it down. Two away. Look at where Latos stays with Russell Martin. Everything is away, whether it be the breaking ball or the fastball. There was only one pitch that sunk down and in. You look at Martin's numbers and Tom you were talking about it earlier all five of his home runs have come on the road. With that being the case. You make him hit you the other way. Now Pedro Alvarez with two down and nobody on. Down a strike Alvarez hitting just 241 that's nothing new. But 14 home runs 44 runs batted in he has only 10 doubles. Started the year batting cleanup after back to back seasons where he hit better than 30 home runs. That ball almost bounced in the grass. Straight up in the air. Easy for Todd Frazier and Matt Latos has retired the first six on the night. Reds will come to the plate in the second inning with a one nothing lead. Home run off that Toyota sign in right center during our game tonight. Phil Stemmer from Catlettsburg, Kentucky, will win that beautiful new Tundra on display every night here at the ballpark. And you can register for your chance to win by visiting your Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer. Reds one, Pirates nothing. Game one of a three game series. Big crowd on a just glorious weather night. Temperatures in the low 70s, no humidity. 
It has just been an incredible couple of weeks outside of a day here or a day there with a little bit of rain and that really hadn't been much. The weather going all the way to the 4th of July weekend virtually every day has been just like this did. And expected more of the same tomorrow night. Sunday a little warmer but then I saw back in the 70s again all of next week. If you think about it it's been pretty mild summer. And a Normal. great summer. July would be smoking. And without a doubt, one of the coolest summers I can ever remember. Two and one to Ryan Lund. We had a good day yesterday at the plate. 263 batters, six home runs, and 26 runs batted in. You know, Tom, I, I don't know that we saw that turn that we're seeing from Jeff Locke last year. Looks like he's turning his back more almost a semi Johnny Cueto kind of turn before he comes to the plate. And I think it's increased his effectiveness as far as hiding the baseball. See the step back he turns the whole number and name to the plate and then comes through. Whether it's just a mental advantage or whether it's actually working, it doesn't matter. How about that piece of hitting? You don't see that much from Ryan Ludwig shooting that ball the other way. And he starts saying here in the red second inning with a double. That's a nice piece of hitting right there by Ryan Ludwig. When we saw Ludwig go on that tear for about two weeks. Every ball was up the middle and into the right center field gap. When he's doing that, that is money. Look at the head down right on the baseball. See a lot of times guys take a swing at that pitch their chins over there in that third base dugout. <laughs> well, now Heisey and the Pirates are wondering will Heisey try and move him along with a bunt with the bottom of the order coming up you wouldn't think so. And that one down and in ball one. Heisey batting in the not eight seven spot I beg your pardon in Santiago. After him, before you get to Matt Latos, Isaac will lay down a bunt. And he can drag bunt down that third baseline. Well, with a seven-day trip to the disabled list due to a concussion, and that was something they created just a couple of years ago. Since the concussions have become so prevalent, not only in in football, but also in baseball. They give you a seven day deal now. Heisey figures to get playing time, and again, you know, through all the ups and downs and the chances or lack of chances, or however you'd like to define it, Heisey, at least for another week, figures to get a chance again. And that means probably this entire series, especially with a left hander Liriano on the mound Sunday. No doubt about it. That's how Josh Harrison made the all-star team. Good pitch right there, two and two. Well, they really have Heisey shaded to pull in left. Nowhere else except left field. And pitching him in to go along with it. He out of there on strikes, failing to advance a runner on to third. So a couple of mistakes already here in the early going for a team that might be a little short on offense right now. The Reds. We have a runner at third with nobody out, unable to get him home, and now at the very minimum a chance to advance Ludwig down to third with none out. If you're watching at all from the dugout in the early part of this ball game, Frazier change up, even through a change up to Jay Bruce. Now he struck Bruce out with the fastball. But he got Mezzarocco on back to back change ups. As a hitter, you have to look for the hardest pitch and then adjust. This guy throws a lot of change ups. You got to be prepared for it. 
Now Santiago, he has five hits in his last nine at bats. He has swung the bat very well, getting four starts on this homestand. A couple of doubles, a couple of runs batted in. Actually had a inside the park home run taken away from him on a fan interference call. How did the ball hit off the top of the wall? In fact, when the ball came off of his bat, I thought he had his first home run in a red uniform. He has really played well here, getting a little more playing time recently. It's very hard when you only get it is. Three, four, five at bats over a three, four, five week time frame, and that's really where Santiago was once the Reds got everybody back and healthy again. Bouncer over the mound. Mercer going to charge and has no play. Hustling all the way, Santiago. He was smelling hit as soon as that ball took a high hop over the pitcher's head lock. Now here Cowboys the situation as you get a look at that ball bouncing over the mound and Mercer just had no play where Chris Welsh and I were talking about this the other night where you can talk to fans you can talk to members of the media more importantly you can talk to players you can talk to managers about this exact situation with one out in the inning already. Do you let your pitcher swing away and try and drive in the run? Or do you give him up for a bunt and hope for a two out hit behind him? And you'll get very different opinions from guys that manage Major League Baseball teams with one out what to do. Nobody out, no brain. With Billy Hamilton hitting from the left side, I say you bunt. Hitting from the right side, I take my chances with Matt Latos. That way I've got two batters. That may be able to flare one in. Of course, uh, the, the ones who are pro bunt would say, you don't want this guy bouncing into a double play. It's a very interesting topping. Now, Latos has already shortened up here. Pulls about away, ball one. He'll look down to third once again to Steve Smith. A lot of moving around going on if they think you're bunting. Now, Latos does not have a hit. He's 0 for 12. He has one run batted in. And they ask him to bunt. And they throw to second. They get the out there. They throw to first. So after all of that, you end up bunting in to a double play. That's a great play by Russell Martin. Now, the Reds for the second time miss on a scoring chance with a runner at third and fewer than two men out. And we're on our way to the third, where the Reds lead the Pirates 1 0.
Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's trade great dishes together. Buy Toyota for over 30 Toyota offers. Visit buyatoyota.com. And by B-Dubs, kick off your afternoon at B-Dubs with the best seats outside of Brazil this summer. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. That's the area just behind the first base dugout. I love watching those little kids get in there. They hit the ball, and then they watch it, and then they take off around the bases. I mean, it is such a great area. Of course, this time next year, we talked about it this week. The All-Star Game here next summer. Mm. Well, this time next year, it is going to be electric. Rocket. Well, Matt Latos was very upset with himself after bunting into that double play. Fired his helmet back into the dugout. We know that Matt is not afraid to wear his heart on his sleeve. But you can't take it to the mound with you. Short memory in this game. Well, he's throwing the ball very well. He's retired the Pirates 1 2 3 in each of the first two innings. So Gabby Sanchez, Jordy Mercer, and the pitcher Locke here in the Pirate third with the Reds leading by a run. Strike one on Sanchez. Reds two and a half behind the front running Milwaukee Brewers in the NL Central. Cardinals are two back. Cardinals had a chance to gain ground yesterday. It was the only game they lost in the four game series. In the air and diving to get it is Heisey. And this airtight Reds defense has been bringing it each and every night, regardless of who's in the field. Just out of instinct after watching Hamilton out there. That's the first guy you look at. And Heisey comes out of nowhere with a phenomenal play. Now Latos walking back behind the mound, needing an extra minute, bent over at the waist. Flexing his knee. Of course, the Reds had to come get Homer Bailey yesterday after he worked five innings with issues with the knee. Now they say that Bailey's going to make his next start. Of course, his next start won't come till after the All-Star break. Well, he has plenty of time to try and get that thing right. And now Mezzaranko wants to know what's going on, and Brian Price. Is going to come out to the mound with a head trainer Paul Lassard right behind him. My oh my. After all the Reds have been through this year, without a doubt, the most injured team to keep players in the National League the first two plus months of this year. They get healthy, they take off, and here in the midst of this incredible run of playing so well. Brandon Phillips gone for at least a month and a half, maybe longer. Votto put back on the disabled list. Schumacher on the DL before the game today. Well, it was the right knee that Matt had surgery on. Now you just have you're skittish on everything that happens out there. Could that be it? Trying to leg out that bunt at the end of the inning. I would say that's more of an issue than the pitch that he threw on the fly out to right field. You leap and you jam that right knee into the bag. Because you could really see the extension there as he leapt to the bank. Well, he's convinced him for the time being that he's going to stay in there. I think Brian Price is telling Matt in no uncertain terms look, you feel this, we got to know. You can work around one game. 
You can't work around a month and a half losing a starter. Jordy Mercer in the batting. But Brian Price you know, has to wonder you know, what did I do? <laughs> to you have to go through this as a first year manager and, and I don't even say that kiddingly obviously Brian's not thinking that except for maybe when he's you know laying in bed and you're twisting and turning trying to go to sleep and figure out who in the world is going to be on your team. But when you begin the year with Sean Marshall Jonathan Broxton or Chapman your left handed man your set up man on the left side the right side your closer or all Chapman on the deal Matt Latos on the deal Skip Schumacher on the deal you start the year Votto gets hurt. He's on the DL. Jay Bruce, knee surgery. He's on the DL. <laughs> Devin Mezzarocco begins the year on the disabled list. You get him back. He's as hot as a human being can possibly be. Then he goes on the DL. There's a fly ball on the left, and Ludwig will track it down. Two away in the inning. The other night, Billy Hamilton has to leave the game because he's got tightness in a hamstring. Brandon Phillips in, tears up his thumb. And Tony, Sing surgery. Tony Singrani went on the disabled list on the AAA disabled exactly list. Exactly right. After having some shoulder issues in the big leagues. But I can assure you, there are no teams that feel sorry for. No. You. And the game will go on. That's why you have a 25 man roster and you have a developmental program AAA, AA, and A ball. Not only are you tested at the big league level, but your development program is tested as well. Out of pitcher Jeff Locke. One hit at 13 at bats for Locke. A native of New Hampshire. You don't see many Major League Baseball players come out of that state. And how about that? He becomes the first pirate to reach base with a two out single into left center field. And Locke does not hit a whole lot. He just dropped the bat out there like he knew what he was doing. The numbers wouldn't suggest that. Goes to show you anybody with a bat can be a little dangerous. And we know this guy is dangerous in Polanco. He struck out his first time up. Mentioned playing in his 30th game tonight since being brought up from the minor leagues. 281 batter coming into play. Three home runs, two doubles, 13 runs batted in. And Leto's going to work. Pass ball strike one. The key for young players coming to the big leagues is not how you handle success. It's how you handle the failure and the failure will come. You will hit a wall and how you handle the downtime really is going to signify how you're going to be as a big leaguer. In the air down a left field line Now this is a long run for everybody but Ludwig will get there and that'll end the inning so we'll keep an eye on Latos. He gives up a hit, no runs. Reds are in front, one nothing.
2014 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. The National League's best, the American League's best collide. Don't miss the action Tuesday night, July the 15th, only on Fox. And to think that all of that hoopla is coming to Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. In just a year. Well, the Reds, as we mentioned earlier, they have sent better than 30 employees in every area of the franchise imaginable because all hands will certainly be on deck no matter what job they may have inside the Reds organization as they are for the Twins organization right now. And so many folks around the city, volunteers, different businesses. Be it's be an incredible four or five days. Be involved in the planning, be involved in the experience. And see what you can do to not make mistakes that are made in Minnesota and how you can improve it when it comes to Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Billy Hamilton bunted the ball right at the first baseman Sanchez who went to tag him and missed. <laughs> Billy wound up at first and scored as Zach Cozart doubled off the left field wall. That's the only run of the night. We're in the bottom of the third. 2 0 on Hamilton. Now, Locke has started a lot of hitters behind in the count here tonight. He's only thrown five more strikes than balls. And he struck out three batters, and every one of them he fell behind in the count. And that one smoked into center field by Hamilton. And he's aboard for the second time. That is something that we have not seen from Hamilton thus far this year. Is consistency at the plate from the right side. If that comes around, look out. Almost the entire right side of the infield is open for Zach Kozai. Second baseman Walker cheating near the bag. It's very clear that Locke does not have a good move to first base. Having said all that, he must deliver the ball to the plate pretty quickly because opponents have stolen in his career 18 bases against him, but they've been thrown out 12 times. And Hamilton took off too early. And he is out. Billy saying he was in there. He was running on first move from the pitcher, and he guessed wrong. It goes as a caught stealing one to four to six and Brian Price again will come out and make sure that mm. might have been safe. We'll have to take a look at that again. Well the throw sure beat him there. It looked like when Jordy Mercer brought the tag down. He brought the tag down on the outside part of the bag. Yeah, it looked like the glove was right there before he hit the bag. And Billy very upset with himself. Tell you what, the Reds had a little sloppy fundamentally here early on tonight. Some of the little things. And that has not been the norm of late. They have been very, very sharp in all facets of the game. But tonight they had a runner at third with nobody out. Kozai on contact. The ball that left the bat by Frazier tried to come in and score. Was caught in a rundown, thrown out. They had runners on the corners with a pitcher up who butted into a double play. After Heisey had started off the inning, Ludwig doubled and Chris couldn't get him down to third base. That's what I was talking about earlier. When you lose key players on your club, sometimes you try to do a little bit too much and you get out of your game. And that doesn't work so well at this level. You lock in, you concentrate more, you make sure you do everything that you can within yourself. But if you try to do something outside of your comfort level, that's when you get in trouble. Great crowd here tonight on this Friday night. Expecting another big crowd tomorrow night. What with 
the first ever Billy Hamilton bobblehead giveaway night to the first 25,000. And of course, Sunday, the final game before the break, Johnny Cueto will be on the map. Still two and two on Kozar. It's a big series right here, not just for the Reds, but for the Pirates as well. well we said before this week began that this was going to be a huge week inside the National League Central Division. You had the Pirates playing the Cardinals. You know, the Brewers. Just goes to show you again as Cozart is thrown out for round number two. Just goes to show you, much like the Reds in San Diego, you can be playing a team that is down. You might think on paper they shouldn't be able to play with you. In the Brewers' case, it was the Philadelphia Phillies. Brewers sweep the Philly, or the Brewer, the Phillies sweep the Brewers in a four-game series. And now here this weekend, you have the Pirates here and the Brewers playing the St. Louis Cardinals. For the final three games leading up to the break. That series, by the way, in Milwaukee. All four teams in the same division, all four over the 500 mark. Frazier, a two out single in the center field. They had Neil Walker played in the proper spot. Frazier just hit it over his head. This is by far the biggest shifting team that I've seen. In any side of baseball, National or American League. Now, from time to time, we have seen Jay Bruce think about laying down a bunt. Most of the time, he's fouled it off. It takes a strike. I mean, he could completely square around. Bunt it up the third base line, count to three, and then run and have a bunt hit the way the Pirates are playing defense here. But he also has more home runs against left handed pitching than any batter in baseball over the last five years. That includes right handed or left handed hitting. Yeah. Well, it helps that Jay has Mazzarocco hitting behind him. Frazier, a guy that Locke obviously is paying a little bit of attention to as well. Todd has 13 stolen bases. He's only been thrown out five times. Frazier likes to get that walking lead at first base. And if you're a pitcher, if you don't stop him in that walking lead, he will continue on to second. Reds have the second most stolen bases in the National League this year. The Pirates are right behind them. They have the third most. The Dodgers lead the National League. All star D. Gordon. Popped up. Third base side. I don't think anybody's getting to this one. Nope. Look at the catcher, Russell Mark. Tell you what, man, that guy, he lays it on the line every night. He beat Alvarez to the ball, and Alvarez was playing at the shortstop position. And you could see Alvarez just kind of slow up a bit, but Martin was not slowing up at all. Of course, Martin originally came up with the Dodgers. He had some good years for that team. Then he went to the Yankees, and his offense really slipped. And when the Pirates brought him in, they felt like they were getting the guy under the radar, coming off a very poor offensive season with the Yankees. Tremendous game caller and handling of pitchers. Pulled to the right side, but right into the very teeth of the defense, and that'll be all for the Reds. They get two hits of the four batters that come to the plate. And it's still one nothing at the end of three.
Famer Al McCoy on the game day live page. Of course, the story in all of sports today. What a great story for Cleveland and a great story for the state of Ohio. LeBron James announcing that he is coming back home to the Buckeye State. How about that? Get complete coverage of all the day's action brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto. Drive safe, spend less. LeBron! After he broke so many hearts, Calvin, yeah, he when did. he left to go to Miami, and That's I said to my wife, though. I said to my kids this morning, I said, this is what the Buckeye State does to you if you're from here. It never lets you go for too long. That's you got to come up. back. That's where he grew up. Good for him. Urban Meyer, we talk to him all the time about it. Now the key is to bring home a winner. That's right. And they've got work to do around it. Yes, There's they no do. debate about that. Yes, they do. Well, we wish them well. 1 and 0 to count on Josh Harrison. And their strike. Here's another native Buckeye who still makes his home here in Cincinnati. Well, there was a fabulous story written on this young man and in the Pittsburgh paper recently. Talked about his upbringing and his his mother Bonita, his father and minister Vince Senior and his family here tonight. They're just so excited and so proud of Josh Harrison as they should be. We talked about how his mom and Josh was too young to play on his older brother's little league, not old team. There's a swing and a miss. So his mom said, well, I'll take a handle of this situation. I'm coaching my own team. <laughs> and he's going to play on him. Curveball down and away. That ball went straight down. Latos buries the speeds on the breaking ball. One away in the inning for Andrew McCutcheon. This is just a one nothing game. Both of these teams have played more than their fair share. I mean you think the Reds have played a lot. Take a look at the Pirates. They have played a whopping 37 one run games this year. The Reds have played 32. And it seems like every time these two teams hook up it is knocked down drag out. Back and forth. Everything played awfully close to the vest. I drive deep right center field and like we talked about when you miss chances early in the game it's one swing of the bat that can tie it up. And that's what McCutcheon has done here on the Pirates second hit of the game. He has 15 home runs this year. Four of them have come against the Reds. Gives him his 36th RBI since the 1st of June. That is tops not only in the National League, but in Major League Baseball. Got that one on the outside part of the plate, but it was elevated a bit. Gutchin can hit that one. Neil Walker with a count of 1 0, 1 1 game. That one pulled to Jay Bruce, and that'll be an error. Toughest part about playing in the infield, the ball's going to get to you in a hurry. And when those feet go dead and you're not getting set right at the last second, your rhythm gets off with the glove, and you can see Jay get handcuffed there. That ball looked like it hit him on a right wrist. It did. Hopefully, he's all right. That ball was a smash off the bat of the walker. Here's Russell Martin. Now the left field line and out of play. Sounded like he broke his back. Get that one off the end. 
Well, a reminder coming up a little bit later on. We'll have our Miller time moment brought to you by Miller Lite. Pirates have tied the game on an Andrew McCutcheon. Solo home run here in the fourth. They have one on, one out. And on one account on Russell Martin in the first of three. Charlie Morton, the Mike Leak tomorrow night. That's a 7.15 start time. And then 110 Sunday, Johnny Cueto against Francisco Liriano. will be coming off to disable this. Like Devin turned his glove wrong on that pitch and it just rolled right between the legs. Based on the reaction of Latos, it almost makes you wonder if there was a cross up on that play. Because Latos walked in and, and said that, you know, pointed. A number of times saying that's my fault. Well, normally you don't have a fastball that bounces at the plate. That's that's the toughest part. And for a catcher, you're not expecting a pitcher to bounce a fastball. Breaking ball, yes. Change up, yeah. Fastball, no. Two and one to Martin. They have the go-ahead run in scoring position. And that's just off the outside corner. Pitching Martin tough Tom is the guy standing on deck. Now, granted, he swings and misses a lot, he pops up a lot of pitches. But Pedro Alvarez can hit the ball a long way if you make a mistake. And if you don't get Martin here, that would be a three run mistake. That would be a major problem. Three and two on Russell Martin. Check of the runner out at second base. And an emergency swing there, but he's able to foul it away. That's one of those swings where you're guessing breaking ball and you get the heater. Once more the payoff pitch coming late toast against Martin with a go ahead run Walker at second base. And that would just hit his bat. On a pitch in that he was trying to check his swing and hold off from swing. You can see the upper body of Martin going towards the outside part of the plate. He's guessing breaking ball. And this ball starts away and comes running up and in. The only reason that ball catches the bat is because Martin was going. Diving down and away looking for the breaking ball. Well, he walked it. But this game just has a very odd vibe to it. You know, two batters into the game after a one, two, three top of the first inning. The Reds have a one nothing lead and a runner at third and nobody out. Well ever since then. There have been a number of little things already that the Reds. It's almost just a little sluggish. I mean they played. Four very long days of baseball putting in five games. Extra innings yesterday. And the Pirates who Latos has just dominated. Through the front three innings of this game. Tie it on one swing of the bat. You get an error, you get a pass ball, you get a walk, and the next thing you know, a 
Pirates have a chance to take the lead. Well, that's why you've got to make pitches here. Especially to the big fella at the plate. Alvarez popped up to Frazier ending the Pirates second inning. What a play that was by Mezzarocco as again Latos bounces one up there and it's 2-0. That one looked like it got Mezzarocco on the left ear. I didn't see him. He's, in, he's uncomfortable right now. See him go down to block this. Went underneath the mask. You could see the flare outs on the mask. That's to protect the ears, but it went underneath the flare out part of the metal on the mask and caught him in the left ear. It's dangerous pitch right here, 2 0. Oh. And there's that three run mistake. Pirates lead 4 to 1. Alvarez taking his sweet time getting around those bases. Three run home run. And it is a four to one Pirates lead. This is what you did not want to have happen when you were battling with Russell Martin. And it goes back to that at bat from Martin. He kept fouling off pitches. He got the walk. One swing of the bat, things get ugly. And I mean, it has happened right now. Four batters in a row reach base. Home run by McCutcheon, on Aaron, by Bruce, allowed Walker to reach. This one caught in fair ground by Heisey, and that's the second out of the inning. A pass ball allowed Walker to get into scoring position. Quite a battle by Russell Martin drawing the walk. And then Alvarez, who's been dropped all the way down recently to the number seven spot in the batting order. But Latos falls behind him 2 0. Oh. Next pitch, three run home run, three run Pirates lead. So now the batter mercy. It's only the second home run, well, the second and third home runs now led by Latos. His first three, first five starts, he had only allowed one home run. Boy, this crowd has gone as quiet as it has been in a long time in this ballpark. Twenty five pitches in this inning for Matt Latos and it's two and one on Jordy Mercy. This is the point in time where this Reds offense is going to be challenged. That ball in the air, deep right center field. Hamilton there, inning over. Pirates get four and lead by three.
shot in the top of the fourth Pirates lead over the Reds. I'm Jim Day. Let's check out our lows. Keep improving. And the Reds by month. Just dial it up as we get into the summer months. 12 and 15 in March and April. One game under in May. Eight games over in June and so far in July. Six and four. So if you keep improving like that, you're going to stay in the race. But they got some work to do, obviously, tonight, Tom. Well, what they do, Jim Bowen. We'll see if they can come from behind. Of course, they had that game against the Cubs where they rallied from 5 nothing down on the back end of that day-night doubleheader. But a long way to go in this one. They batted the bottom half of the fourth inning, but we talked about you know, the Reds about hit them six to three. They had out hit them six to one going into this top of the fourth inning. But the Reds have already missed on a number of chances twice, in fact, with a runner at third and fewer than two men out to get in any more runs. 2 0 on Mezzarocco. He struck out ending the first inning. He'll be followed by Ryan Ludwig and then Chris Heisey. The key for the Reds right now is to stay patient against the off speed throwing Jeff Locke. You start trying to think, well, we've got to get it back with one swing of the bat. Play right into the changeup of Jeff Locke. Came over the fastball in on Mezzarocco's hands and he fouls it off. And clearly Locke is already locked into a pattern of in, in, in with a lot of fastballs, Jeff, to the right-handed hitters. And when he gets deeper into the count, especially with two strikes, nothing but change-ups down and away. And he starts in simply because if he does miss inside, the changeup is still effective. Even at two and zero or three and one, Ludwig waits in the on deck circle. Reds down four to one as they bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Three and two on Mezzarocco. More times than not, for a hitter that's aggressive at the plate. You get the ball right on the inside corner. He's going to pull it foul. The balls that get hit a long way are the balls that either run back out over the plate or they stay out over the plate and are elevated. That would be the proverbial wheelhouse. Right up in the air. That time he changed up the pattern through a lot more fastballs in. And it's a fly ball to McCutcheon one away. Our AT&T call to action. You can tweet your photo using hashtag Ohio fan photo. Perhaps we'll show it during an upcoming telecast brought to you by AT&T. You get the feeling Tom that Jeff Locke goes with whatever Russell Martin puts down. Not a whole lot of shaking. By this young left hander on the mound. He sees the sign and he's throwing. Ludwig doubled into right center field his first time up. One ball and one strike. You were talking about the value of Russell Martin. I saw an interesting quote from Johnny Bench talking about Mezzarocco. Your number one asset as a catcher, according to Johnny Bench, is being a quality game call. Then it's blocking balls and throwing runners out. Number two. Number three is the offense. But yet, we recognize hitters or catchers for their hitting ability instead of the first two. But almost got Ryan Ludwig.
course that was commonplace between these two teams a year ago. They had 29 times the batter was hit by a pitch. I mean it seemingly never ended when the Reds and Pirates got together. Three and two on Ludwig. And a liner caught by Alvarez down at third. Two out. Some of those ball games last year, it wasn't just one guy getting hit by mistake. It was guys getting thumped left and right, two, three, four a game. Joe Kelly loaded the bases in the Milwaukee first inning with nobody out. Brewers have scored one time, but now there are two men out. As Heisey first pitch swinging, pulls it foul and out of play, third base side, 0 and 1. have scored the most runs among all teams in the National League. In fact all the Major League Baseball with the runs in the first inning jumping on the opposition. They have 61 of those this year. Lock knocks him down. That's time to recover. And a 1 2 3 inning for Jeff Lock. We're on our way to the fifth where the Pirates own a 4 to 1 lead. Pirates lead here as we begin the fifth inning. Matt Latos, we talked about it early. Dominance down in the strike zone, very important. Early in the game, he was down both fastball and the breaking ball. But then the fourth inning rolls around, and you can see where these pitches are. Up around mid-thigh, and those pitches usually get hit pretty far. The one on this side. 2 and 0 oh, fastball, and it was hit a long way, and it was the big blast. Three run home run off the bat of Pedro Alvarez. The velocity for Matt Lentos early on, top speed 95. It stayed pretty even. And we're starting to see Matt more and more in that 92, 93 mile an hour range. That's what we're used to seeing in the time that Lentos has been with the Reds. Steadily getting better. to the pitcher Jeff Locke.
Pirates got all four on four straight hitters in the fourth inning against late toes. And he has fallen behind the pitcher three balls and no strikes. Something is bothering Latos or not. We saw him flexing the knee a little bit earlier. But reminding him, get ready for Reds action 30 minutes before the start of every game that we have here on Fox Sports Ohio with Reds Live, presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing, will be on the Fox Network tomorrow. And of course, after the game, we have Reds Live, the post game version, which is brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. Tomorrow will be on the Fox Network. So here in greater Cincinnati that would be on channel 19 WXIX television. And then we're right back here for Sunday's game. A 110 start Reds live gets underway at 1230. Tom immediately after the four pitch walk to Jeff Lott. Brian Price motion for Jeff Pico to come over the Reds pitching coach. And they are still conversing and watching. With concerned minds Matt Lentos. One thing that can never be denied about Lake Tos is he wants the ball and he wants to pitch. And we saw that, of course, when he was out on his rehab and the situation occurred where they had a rain delay. Then he had a calf injury, you may remember initially, which kept him from getting to 100 pitches in a rehab start. He felt like he was ready. The Reds said, no, you didn't get to 100. You're not coming up because of the uh, cramp that he had in the calf. Well, then the next time he went out, and he was right around 70 75 pitches and a rain delay hit. and here you see him flexing the knee again. I don't know if it's the knee as much as it is maybe a little bit of stiffness in the back because of the way he's turning and bending. He was stretching earlier in the dugout. Well he gets Polanco the pitcher takes off throw down there and the pitcher's out. And Latos is clearly limping around. He went over to cover third base and it was a painful trot over to third. And here comes Brian Price and Paul is hard again. Yeah I think they were watching from the dugout. I think that's the reason Brian Price called over Jeff Pico. You can see this pitch. It's stabbed into the ground. And a lot of that more times than not is just stiffness. As you release the baseball. And you're right. You could see Latos as he moved towards third base. You don't know. If, you don't know if it's back spasms. You don't know if it's the knee. But there obviously is something going on. And action begins down in the Reds bullpen. Well, he's convinced him again that he's going to stay in the game. There's two outs and nobody on after the strike him out, throw him out. Now Carlos Contreras, he was sent down and recalled in a span of about 24 hours. And he's the one getting loose out there in the Reds bullpen. Josh Harrison, the batter, 0 for 2, has popped a short and struck out. That's the fastest pitch Latos has thrown in this inning by three miles per hour at 92. Milwaukee scores three times off Joe Kelly in the bottom of the first inning. And that's where they stand as they begin this top of the second inning in Milwaukee. That one clobbered foul. Well, he jumped all over that pitch. Well, that goes back to that stat you were mentioning earlier about the runs scored in the first inning by the Brewers, and they just add three more to that tonight. That'll help your starters out. Harrison gone swinging, and that'll end the inning. And Leto still stretching and flexing and lifting as he goes back to the dugout. Reds are down four to one.
tablet, download on the App Store, visit Reds.com today. Reds bad bottom of the fifth inning, trailing four to one, and the night is clearly over for Matt Latos. Mike Leak has already moved into the on deck circle, and there you get a look at Latos on his way back to the Reds clubhouse. If we hear anything down there, we'll let you know. And the man on the spot, of course, is Jim Day. As Santiago bounces out on the first pitch of the inning. Jim, how about it? Well, they had a discussion down there, and Brian Price was very adamant, saying, you are done. I am not taking the chance of having you out, like Cowboy said, for a month and a half as a precautionary measure. Now, I'm not privy to what the injury is, but with a three-man bench, they're sending Mike Leak up there to the plate as the Reds roll in the dice. With a couple of extra relievers tonight, uh, guys have pitched three straight days. It was an interesting move when Brandon Phillips went to the DL. They recalled two minor league pitchers, and they were going with a three-man bench just for tonight. Look for them to make a player move tomorrow. But right now, fifth inning, Mike Leak is your pinch hitter. All right, Jim Day, thank you very much. Well, time after time during this stretch where the Reds have had all these pitchers in a very limited bench. Brian Price has felt like there's not one time where it's come back to bite him. But batting a pitcher in the fifth inning is not the ideal scenario. And people can talk about what Leak has done as a batter and you know, all that kind of thing. But this year, for whatever reason, Mike Leak has not been the same kind of hitter. But who knows? Maybe he's got a pinch hit knock in him right now. Reds are down by three, batting in the fifth. Well, you know as well as I do, Tom, once you've been around the league a little bit, if you're a good hitting pitcher, the opponent is going to make sure you hit a breaking ball. Leak this year has 40 at bats and only has five base hits. One of them a home run, one a double. He has two runs batted in. That home run came against these Pirates here against Garrett Cole, a 96 mile an hour eater that he turned around into the left field seats. Two away in the inning. Here's that changeup. Even to a pitcher, Locke will throw it anytime. Well, not many dates left for you to get your group on board the Fan Express, so you might want to get on the horn immediately. You can call the Reds Group Sales at 513 765 7600. This is the kind of ball game that is really going to test the Reds. If you get behind early and the starting pitching is has given up a few runs early in the game. This is where your offense is tested to the greatest degree without Phillips and without Vada. The ability to come back. Well, Hamilton has done his part tonight. A pair of hits. He scored their only run. Although he did after a leadoff single in the third inning, one of the one of the mistakes. And there have been a number of them already early tonight by the Reds. Where he took off on the first move of Locke. Locke wound up throwing the first base, and the first baseman threw him out as he took off for second base. And that was a big play in his game because you never know how the rest of the inning plays out with Hamilton over there at first base. Two batters later, Frazier singled in that inning. In fact, the Frazier single was the last read to reach base. Two and one on Hamilton. Well, those. Base running issues that normally you would say, well, that's aggressive play. Without Phillips and Votto, they become magnified. Mm -hmm. Rian one to Billy Hamilton. Well, his job is to get on base by hook or by crook, and really trying to do that for the third time tonight. From a 3 1 change up for a strike. He may come right back with it. Call that the OK change. 
put your middle finger and the one closest to the pinky on the seams of the ball. Ring finger, middle finger. And your hand will pronate and it will kill the speed on the baseball. But it looks just like a fastball when it comes out of your hand. And a base hit by Billy Hamilton, third time tonight. It's almost identical to the hit that he had back in the third inning. Right over the second baseman, Neil Walker. Well, you'd love to get Frazier to the plate in this inning with two away. You've got him standing in the on deck circle and Zach Kozar at the batter. And again, as we brought up the last time, the entire right side, I mean all of it, is wide open for Kozar. Now, Players will tell you they can't guide the ball, but look at that right side of the infield. I mean, there is nobody over here. This is the closest man. You could almost bunt the ball that way. One more in the left field. That'll end the inning. One hit, one man left. We played five, and the Reds are down by three. Summary very first inning Billy Hamilton a bunt and Gabby Sanchez fielded it and missed on the tag. On the very next pitch Zach Kozar bang one off the left field wall plating Billy Hamilton. And the Reds had a one nothing lead they would not score further in that inning. Lawrence McCutcheon or Andrew McCutcheon tied the game on a home run to right center field after an error and a walk Pedro Alvarez a three run home run and you're up to speed on what's going on. Pirates in the opener of this three game series, a four to one lead. Beautiful night, big crowd, full moon. We'll see if the Reds can come from behind. If we get any word on Madeleine Toast, we'll let you know. What we do know is Carlos Contreras takes over for him on the mound. Contreras has thrown the ball all right in his first few appearances. Youngster making his first time through the big leagues. He's thrown strikes not only with the fastball but with the breaking ball as well. And he will face Andrew McCutcheon, who homered leading off the or with one out in the fourth inning to tie this game. Fifteen home runs now for McCutcheon. Fifty-nine runs batted in. Two and zero. Oh.
The one. rookie Abreu is just setting the world on fire over in the American League. He has 28 home runs and a whopping 71 runs batted in. That is a staggering total. That one ripped into left center field and that'll go all the way to the wall. Cutchin on his way to second and he'll stop right there after Hamilton fires it back to the infield. Four straight fastballs and a hitter like McCutcheon. After the first one, he's got you down pat. The 59 RBIs this year for McCutcheon tied for fourth most in the league. It's tied with Justin Morneau. Pirates must be wondering. Where was that when we brought him in last year? More no, if I'm not mistaken, did not have a single home run for the Pirates after he came over from Minnesota. But of course, this year he's playing in Denver. The league leader is John Carlos Stanton of the Marlins with 63, and Paul Goldschmidt of the Arizona Diamondbacks has 61. Contreras falls behind Walker, 1 0, 2 0. Two batters in a row. He's fallen behind. Two balls, no strikes. If you're a young pitcher like Contreras, Best thing to do is keep your eyes on the catcher's mitt and forget about the names on the back of the jerseys as they come to the plate. Easier said than done. Little wrinkle in that one, two and two. Haven't seen Contreras at all, and he can stay ahead in the count. You'll get swings like that. They don't know what you've got. That'll get the job done, advancing the runner. So Walker, without knocking in the run, does have a productive at bat. One away in the inning. kind of ground balls are thankless as far as statistics go mm -hmm. but from a team perspective they are the ultimate at bat Reds infield drawn in with a runner at third and one out and it's ball one to Russell Martin This will knock in another run. 5 1 Pittsburgh. Martin under control. Takes that breaking ball right back up the middle. Not a bad pitch from Contreras. Just a good piece of hitting by Russell Martin. So now Alvarez, who delivered the tie-breaking three-run home run, he got ahead in the count against Latos at 2-0. and oh. And then he got one he could hammer, and that he did down the right field line, scoring both Walker and Martin. At the time, made it 4-1, to one, and now the double ground ball and a single. They get a four-run pirate lead here in the top of the sixth inning.
Meanwhile, Joe Kelly for the Cardinals is having a terrible time getting people out in that game in Milwaukee. They scored three in the first, and the Brewers have the pitcher. And another man on, two on with nobody out batting in the second inning. One ball and two strikes on Alvarez. And a tapper foul. You've got to imagine that the Brewers manager, Ron Renicky, has got to be preaching to his guys, hey, we got three games left before the break. Let's finish as strong as we can. Lay it all out there. Take your time off, and then we'll come back and see if we can't finish this thing out. But let's play hard as we can for three days. And the Brewers are adding to their lead. As Scooter Jeanette just rips one down the right field line into the corner, and it is all Milwaukee so far tonight. A five to nothing lead. And nobody out in the second inning. Reds a half game behind the Cardinals in the division beginning play. Missed a chance to get within a game and a half of the division lead yesterday with that loss in 12 innings to the Cubs. So they're two and a half back going into play tonight. Cowboy, you uh, hit the nail on the head wondering about Latos. We saw him flexing his knee. But then after we watched that replay of him going hard into first base, you thought maybe he had you know, jarred the back. And it is back spasms that have forced Latos to leave this game as Alvarez has gone on strikes two away in the inning. Sundays are family days at Great American Ballpark. It is Sunday. Take advantage of the Reach Magazine family deal. When one member of the family buys a full price ticket, they'll get the option to buy three additional tickets at half price. Always a great deal on Sundays here at the old ballpark. Reds won't be home for a while. They'll begin the second half, mythical second half of the year, playing in New York. Interleague play against the Yankees on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday after the break, and then it's in the Milwaukee for a three game series here before they come back home. That's found out a play by Sanchez, and they'll face the Washington Nationals and the Arizona Diamondbacks. But then they leave for a five game trip, so they're not home much at all between now and August. Yeah, this schedule this year has more quirks than I've seen at any point in time being in the big leagues. The two game road trip going into Boston a day off ahead of time a day off after that. Five game road trips where you have a three game series and then you fly and have a two game series and then back. It's beginning to sound more like basketball than baseball. <laughs> But if you're going to have interleague play, that's how it's got to be. I think if you take a poll among fans, they love it. Two and one to Gabby Sanchez, runner at first, two out. And that one off the mid of Mesoraco hit Sanchez and came right back to him. Three and one. See this ball running up and in. As Rocco has to lunge for it. You're right, that popped out of his mitt and then hit Sanchez. Three and one account on Sanchez, and Contreras trying to get this final out of the inning. And should, it's playable over at first for Bruce, and that'll end the inning. But the Pirates get another run. They lead by four after five and a half.
look at that full moon tonight. Oh, that's not the fan photo. That is. Look at Chuck down there with Brandon Phillips. And that looks like somewhere on the road. That looks like Philadelphia to me. Where they have blue seats, right? That is correct. I mean, I, I can't think of another ballpark that might be with blue seats. The only other place would be in New York, City Field. Mm. It definitely wasn't Dodger Stadium. That's for sure. <laughs> Count on Todd Frazier. It's a big inning for the Reds here. Clearly, a lot of energy has been taken out of this crowd with the Pirates coming up with five unanswered runs. If you're just tuning in, and we brought it up earlier, the Reds had a number of chances to add to what was a 1 0 lead, and they just couldn't do it. And we even said before the Pirates came to bat on the top of that fourth, this game did not have a good vibe to it. Now, you can get that vibe turned around in a hurry with a couple of base hits. We'll see if the Reds can do that here in the bottom of the sixth inning. That one missing away on Todd Frazier. So a full count. You get Frazier, you get Bruce, you get Mesoraco, and they're hoping for more than that. They had six hits the Reds did in the first three innings. They have only one hit since then. That ball in the air, right center field. McCutcheon will go get it, one away. Well, this is a first. Okay, I thought they were going to put all four of their infielders on the right field side of second. Now they move Jordy Mercer back in between short and third. And he puts down a bunt. And not good enough where the pitcher couldn't get to it. Two away in the inning. This ball is bunted, but it pops up into the glove of Jeff Locke. If you get that closer to the third baseline, you've got yourself a base hit. But that was halfway between the dirt on the mound and the third baseline, and Locke got there in a hurry. He falls that way anyway. I don't know if I have seen in a long, long time a left handed pitcher who has thrown more pitches on the inner third of the plate if not off the inside corner but you get the gist of it pitching inside more in a game than Jeff Locke is pitching here tonight now he's you know he's going to get him out eventually on the changeup but it there is no fear in Locke on any right handed batter up there about coming in well, he's following a path created by Cliff Lee because that's how Lee pitches hard in and then the soft away with the change up there just like he did Mesoraco. End of six at Great American Ballpark. The Pirates in front of the Reds a 5-1 game.
brought to you by Chevy. Visit your Tri-State Chevy dealer today. And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital, ranked third in the country on the U.S. News and World Reports 2014. Best Children's Hospitals in America. And for perhaps some of those youngsters down into the ball game tonight and their family and friends over at Children's Hospital, we're glad you're with us. And our thoughts and prayers with each and every one of you. Now, speaking of children, I want to send out a big congratulations. John O'Brien has been the Reds' director of ticket operations seemingly forever. His first daughter a number of years ago, Casey, was born, and less than three hours after they held her in their arms, mom and dad, for the first time, John and his wife, Wendy, their little girl had to undergo heart surgery at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And they wondered whether their daughter, Casey, would ever live a normal life. Well, she has lived a normal life. She's 24 years young now. And they wondered, would she ever be able to, to have a baby of her own? Well, well, well. On Tuesday, July the 8th, Casey, her husband, Corey Parton, celebrated the birth of the O'Brien's first grandchild, a grandson, Finn O'Brien Park. So congratulations to mom and dad, to little baby Finn, and to grandma and grandpa, John and Wendy O'Brien. Major Dr. League man. Major League blessing right you there. You better believe that. Talking with John, had dinner with him tonight in there for a little while, and boy, you say your prayers. He was telling us a story about the birth of the baby and about the birth of Casey so long ago. I'm sure with the birth of the grandchild, it brings back memories of when his daughter was born. Cholula hot sauce. That was the heater right there from Contreras. Flame thrower at 95 miles an hour. Two strike fastball up and away. Locke walked his first time up on four pitches. Back to back strikeout. Goes 0 for 3 in the game, has struck out twice and popped to left. Polanco is pulling off the ball much more than what we saw when we were in Pittsburgh. Everything was up the middle, inside the baseball. Got a lot more front shoulder coming out and the hips opening up a lot sooner. And a much longer swing. That inning by Carlos Contreras. Bottom fell out of that pitch. So he fans aside in the seventh inning. One with a fastball, one with a curveball, and one with a split fingered fastball.
this our Mazda pitch by pitch. Fastball in. Change up. That's what we've seen the most of. Got that curveball working as well. He has fed Mazzarocco a steady diet of the changeups here in the early going. Here you see the breakdown and fastballs compared to the off speed stuff. That's been primarily the changeup. And this has been a problem for Alvarez, and they are just completely miffed. It has been going on for the better part of a month and a half. And they told us about it before the game today that it's not whether it's around the neighborhood. There have been many just like this that have just been thrown into the stands. Wow. This is a guy last year. You could pretty much count on him every time with a laser shot to first. You wonder if the batting issues have not gotten into his head on the fielding side. And then Heisey swings at the very next pitch and a dribbler in front of the plate. And there's one out in the inning. Advances on to third base. So let's see if the Reds can get him home and draw within three. Santiago and then they'll go to the bench and bring up a pinch hitter. They've got big Donald Lutz down there. We mentioned the Reds are playing with only. Three bench players tonight. With Schumacher going on the disabled list, a seven day deal before the game with a concussion. They have Christopher Negron, they just brought up. Brian Pena, the backup catcher, and then Donald Lutz. Santiago looks at a strike. When you're bringing a lefty off your bench to hit against a lefty, more times than not, that tells you you are. Paper then on the bench. Santiago behind, no balls and two strikes. Santiago, an infield hit on a slow bouncer to short his first time up. And then he did indeed ground out to the shortstop in the fifth inning. Reds have work to do. They're down by four here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And that's in the air pretty well hit into deep left field and that ball is against the wall. Santiago continues to do his thing. He makes it a five to two ball game. I think Josh Harrison thought that ball was out of here. He looked up kind of broke stride and it hit the top of the wall. Got all of that one. It's another one of those fastballs you were talking about earlier, Tom, that was inside, and that one just happened to get over the plate a little bit, and Santiago got a piece of it. Yeah, Santiago is really doing a good job. He now has what seven hits in his last 12 at bats with three runs batted in and three doubles. Well, I think you hit on it earlier, Tom. It, it's so difficult. I think it's the toughest job in baseball is to try to come off the bench and be a productive hitter when you don't get to play very much. And especially a guy like Santiago who's playing behind Cozart. Santiago's on this club because he can play shortstop. Cozart is in there every day because of his defense and he's been phenomenal. And Santiago is just now having a chance really to see any kind of playing time. Billy Hamilton's in there giving Donald Lutz a scouting report as the Pirates are going to get their bullpen busy. They have right hander Jared Hughes cranking it up quickly down there. The Reds had six hits in the first three innings. That was only their second hit since they had a single by Hamilton in the fifth. Billy has three of the 
Now eight base hits, and they're leaning on big Donald Lutz, just brought up from the minor leagues to get him a little bit closer here. Strike one. We know Lutz has enough power to make this a one run game with one big crack of the bat. But the Reds would be thrilled with just a single right now. Try to roll this lineup back to the top. That ball hit hard in the right field. A base hit by Lutz again to hold the runner at third. Polanco with a good arm, and you're down by three. No sense in taking a chance as a tying run will now come to the plate. That was no dribbler into right field. That was an absolute rocket off the bat of Donald Lutz, and Jeff Locke's night is over. So he goes six and a third innings here tonight. He allows nine hits. Strikes out five, does not walk about it. And that's the difference between Jeff Locke this year and the one who had his season really unravel last year is his ability to throw strikes. He pitched a good game here tonight after a very shaky beginning. So we are Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. Hughes comes on, Billy Hamilton coming up. on Fox Sports 1 with the Cardinals and the Brewers at 3.30. And then baseball night in America from right here in Cincinnati. The Pirates and the Reds at 7 p.m. on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Jared Hughes having an excellent year out of that Pirate bullpen. Takes over four lock. Reds have runners on the corners. One out. Down 5-2. to two. Billy Hamilton the batter. And a high bouncer to the right side. The only out they'll get is Hamilton at first, scoring Santiago, and it's a five to three game here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Hughes is on because he gets a ton of ground balls. Not a strikeout pitcher, pitches to contact, but he's got that hard, boring sinker down and away from lefties and down and into righties. Oh, what a big run that is standing at second base right now for the Reds. Well, they're down by two. Kozar the tying run. He knocked in the first run of the game with a double. And a broken bat rolling to short. And that will end the inning. So Hughes, what, threw two pitches and got two outs. And the Reds are down by two as they score two We're on our way to the eighth.
Dogs and the Pirates at half price. And don't forget the first kids. 8,000 of them, 14 and the younger, receive a kids Todd Frazier plush doll. Things are nice, thanks to Coca-Cola. You got to see it live. That's his Sunday final day before the All-Star break. Reds and the Pirates, that is a 110 first pitch. If you can't make it down, you can join us here on Fox Sports Ohio. We'll have Reds live beginning at 12:30, and our game coverage gets underway at one o'clock. Well, the Reds will go to their bullpen once more. He was just called up from the minor leagues today. We've seen it before, three games this year. Curtis Parch. Parch throws awfully hard. 96, 97, sometimes. Upwards of that with the fastball, but the key for Parch staying down in the strike zone. Josh Harrison will lead things off, followed by McCutcheon. And then Neil Walker throws a first pitch. What was that, slider? Backup slider. to Harrison, a National League All-Star. That was a better one. And Parch can throw that pitch for a strike even at 40 or 50 percent of the time. He could be awfully difficult to get to. He's got that one. 96 miles per hour. Harrison grew up over in Glendale. Very quiet, quaint population, a little under 2,200 over there. Many of you know that is one of the country's very first planned villages. Had two older brothers that were very, very good athletes. Obviously, Josh was, turned out to be the best, at least baseball player in the group. I'm not going to call him the best athlete because he might have brothers that were a better athlete, but he played at Princeton. High school. Isn't he the first utility player to make the all star team in either league? As far as I can remember, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know if the, if the Pirates are actually calling him a, as much a utility player as they're calling him a starter at like four different positions. There's yeah. a swinger and foul ball out of play. I mean, it's, he's pretty much playing every day, he's just playing a lot of different places. But he is a super utility. I mean, you saw years back where even the pitchers started to change a little bit as far as their selection. You're seeing more closers, guys even in a setup role. Not as many starters as we used to see 10, 12 years ago. 97 there and fouled out of play, but fouled out of play nonetheless. Jeff Locke. Allowed three runs. Only one run was an earned run. Of course, that Pedro Alvarez throwing here started that two run rally for the Reds. Harrison hanging in there on that gas. Jumped all over that one. That was a slider, and it's lined to Ryan Ludwig. One away. Obviously, with any young player, it doesn't matter if you're a position player or, in Parch's case, a pitcher. You're looking forward to that day and and hoping that day will come. Cowboy win. You know that shuttle stops running between Cincinnati and Louisville, and you are a regular part of a Cincinnati Reds major league bullpen. Well, that comes with consistency at this level. There is no doubt that 
the physical tools are there for both Contreras and for a guy like Curtis Park to perform at this level. Well, he's already thrown more sliders tonight than I can remember him throwing in all appearances combined. And they've been strikes, except for the first one. If he can command that breaking ball out of that bullpen with a 96 97 mile an hour fastball He'll find some success in a hurry up here One and one on McCutcheon He's been right in the thick of both scoring innings for the Pirates He homer to tie the game off Matt Latos in the fourth and then doubled against Carlos Contreras leading off the sixth inning and scored. And right now that's a big run in this game. Yes, it is. That was a tack on run to go ahead five to one. That's before the Reds scored twice there in the bottom of the seventh inning. And here we are in the eighth. They're down two. Reds will have Frazier, Bruce, and Mezzarocco, and it looks as though they're getting Tony Watson ready for Jay Bruce. Watson, as we brought up earlier, on his way to the All-Star game for the first time. And really in the same vein as the Cincinnati Red Arthur Rhodes was, the great year he had out of the Reds' bullpen. And I had not remembered a a setup man being named to an all-star team until Rhodes was chosen that I, year. I agree. And now we've seen him almost every year since. Out of both leagues. Mike Matheny, in fact, this year has two of them. He has Watson from the left side from the Pirates. And he has his very own Pat Neshek, right-handed setup man in front of Trevor Rosenthal of his St. Louis Cardinals. Who, by the way, are getting drilled. It is six to nothing, Brewers. And that game in the fourth inning. Two and two on McCutcheon. At 98 mile per hour fastball there. McCutcheon is fouling the ball off, but they have all been to the right. Of the first base coach's box. Let's see another slider right here. Eight pitches to Harrison. This is the eighth pitch to McCutcheon. They'll be a ninth. First put pitch that McCutcheon has pulled, and it was a breaking ball down. If you know you had a pitcher out there that had quality control, or you weren't worried about it, especially being a youngster with Park, you elevate that fastball a little bit just above the hands of McCutcheon. That's where his hold is, but you got to have two strikes to get it there. Came back with a 2 2 slider and missed low. Pitches in this at bat so far. After it took part eight pitches to finally retire Josh Harrison. That was a 3 2 breaking ball there. Another 3 2 breaking ball, and he walked it.
Parker still looking for that all elusive hit to keep that hitting streak alive. As you said earlier, he came in with a 12 game hitting streak. Cutchin, we know, can run. Back, he has not been thrown out attempting to steal all year long. He is a perfect 15 of 15. Walker is struck out, reached on an error by Jay Bruce, and scored on the three run home run by Alvarez. And then he grounded out to the shortstop, Cozart, back in the sixth inning, but that did advance at the time. McCutcheon from second to third, and the very next batter, Russell Martin, knocked him in. Those were the little things the Reds did not do in the first three innings of this game when, when really they had. I'm not going to say Jeff Locke on the ropes, but they certainly had him in a position where it should have been a lot more than one to nothing by the end of three innings. They had a runner in third with a run in in the first inning and nobody out. They did not score. They had runners on the corners with one out. They did not score in the second inning. And then Billy Hamilton started too early after a leadoff single in the third. Pitcher threw to first, first baseman threw to short. They tagged him out. And two batters later, Frazier had a base hit. As the Reds had six hits and stranded three runners in the first three innings. Breaking balls here from parts tonight. He's throwing. I mean, he's not shaking. He's throwing what Mesoraco is calling. He's thrown Walker two change ups, split fingers, if you will. Here are the first three pitches. Two batters in a row. The Reds can ill afford to allow another run if they hope to come back in this thing. Those two runs in the seventh, aided by the error on the third baseman Alvarez. You can't let them add to their lead now. Strike one to Russell Martin. Martin has been on base twice tonight. His first time up bounced out to third. Then he walked. That was a big walk in this game. You talked about it at the time, Cowboy. After the error by Jay Bruce, that was following the home run that tied the game by McCutcheon. And after that error, there was a pass ball charge to Devin Mesoraco, which allowed Walker to advance on to second base. It was a lengthy at bat, Martin against Lechos. You talked about it at the time how that can take a lot out of you if you're not careful the next guy behind him that guy being Alvarez might hit one of the stands and that's exactly what he did a three run home run in a four run fourth inning and Mars knocked in a run with a single and a six one ball and two strikes.
One and two on Russell Martin and parts to the plate. I didn't miss by much, but it missed. This big pitch right here. Watch the breaking ball here. You see the reaction of Martin trying to go out over the plate. That spins just a bit inside. Well, that time he was called out, and Martin can't believe it. Now he should have been called out on the pitch before. See this ball come out a slider gets underneath it just a bit. That's why you just see it spin inside. Mesoraco trying to stick the glove. It pops out of the mitt, but he gets the call nonetheless. Now one more big out to go. Here's Alvarez who hit the three run home run in the fourth inning. He's also struck out and popped a third. I mean this guy is his feast or famine as it gets. Over the last three years he has the second most home runs in the National League one behind John Carlos Stanton. Yet he has struck out the most times. In the National League. This is on the side drive of the game on a 2 0 pitch. Broke a 1 1 tie. Just throw one right down the middle here <laughs> on no, three and oh. No, sir. Because he will swing. Not at that. And Parch has walked the bases loaded. He has thrown 33 pitches in this inning. And there's nowhere to put Jordy Mercer. Although they're going to pinch hit for him. Have Logan Andrusic ready in their bullpen. It doesn't look like he looks, in fact, like he's just getting up. That's not the look of a guy that's getting ready to come into a game. Well, he just started throwing. I imagine Jeff Pico is trying to kill as much time as possible to give Andrusic a chance to get loose in case Parch can't find the plate. Well, the Pirates have already announced that Ike Davis is going to be the pinch hitter. And if you manage the Pirates, you might pinch it for Andrew McCutcheon and send up Ike Davis with the bases loaded against the Reds. He has hit two grand slams this year, both of them against the Reds. He hit one as a member of the New York Mets off his old college teammate Mike Lee. And then he hit a grand slam. After he was traded over to the Pittsburgh Pirates. I beg your pardon. He got J.J. Hoover. As a New York Met. And got Leak. As a member of the Pirates. Former number one draft pick out of Arizona State University. Down strike one. Like Davis was going to be a really good player, or at least good hitter in this league, and that has not turned out to be the case. So Davis batting is batting for Gabby Sanchez with the bases loaded. Reds are down two. We're in the eighth inning. A ball to strike. This is the one he got Mike Leak on.
that was just very soon after the trade to the Pirates from the Mets. A little fastball right by him there. One ball and two strikes. Of course, Ike is the son of former outstanding major league reliever Ron Davis. Former teammate of mine out in San Francisco. All the runners have reached via the walk. It started with McCutcheon and then Walker after one out. After a second out, they walk to Alvarez. We'll see if Parch can put away Ike Davis and keep this at a two-run ball game. Ninety-nine miles per hour misses. Pitch struck him out to get out of the inning. So he walks him loaded, but strikes out Davis to end the inning. Reds will have Frazier, Bruce, Mezzarocco. They're hoping for more, trailing by two as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Take a look at our Miller time moment and we turn back the clock. Tony Perez in the All Star game going back to 1967. That's a big A out in Anaheim. A home run that turned out to be the game winner. How about that? Well, here's a guy on his way to the All Star game. Left hander Tony Watson. And when you look at those numbers, you can understand why. And he'll be facing his all star teammate in Todd Frazier. A couple of special years for both of these guys here to begin 2014. Davis remains in the game. Harrison comes into third. Davis at first after batting for Gabby Sanchez and. Now taking over out in left field is Travis Snyder. There's Snyder, McCutcheon, Polanco along the outfield. Harrison, Mercer, Walker, Davis third to first. And a battery of Watson and Russell Martin. One and one to Frazier. The Dead Reds are down by two. And two more cracks at him. Of course, they have a new closer, these Pirates. He's been their setup man the last two, three years. That's Mark Melanson. But after they traded away Jason Grilly for the Angels closer in Frieri, Melanson had already been named a starter. That ball into left center field, and Snyder is there to get it. One out. Um, 
Sports. Hop on down to Habs Irish Pub and watch the game with us next Friday night. You can meet Fox Sports Ohio girl Christine and try your luck with the Home Run Derby Challenge and a chance to win some great prizes. It's all happening next Friday at 7 at Habs Irish Pub in downtown Cincinnati. One away in the inning and here's Jay Bruce 0 for 3. Bruce one of 13 in his career four strikeouts four walks against Tony Watson. They've got a couple of very good left handers in that pirate bullpen and Watson and Justin Wilson. That ball in the air right center field and a good jump and a good catch by McCutcheon two away. Well, that was closing time right there. McCutcheon took a step back on contact and he made some serious ground up with his speed. Hey, it does look easy. Sure did. They're just trying to get a base runner on and bring the tying run to the plate. But two outs and now Mazzarocco hitless at three at bats has walked a couple of times against Watson. He's down strike one. Four or five batters have been very quiet tonight for the Reds. In fact, three, four, and five. You take away a, a third inning, two out single by Frazier. Frazier had a chance with a runner at third. Nobody out in the first inning could not get him in on a ground out. Bruce 0 for 4, Mesoraco 0 for 3. One and two on Devin. And put that ball right where he wanted to, and Mezzarocco crushed it. Up and in, fastball into the upper deck. That's why it was important for what you said earlier get somebody on before that guy comes to the plate. Once down five to one and made it five to four. No doubt about that one as soon as it left the back. So now you have Ryan Ludwig who has six home runs of the year. He just home in the game yesterday. It's only the second home run Watson has given up this year. Ball one. Ryan Braun. Hit the other home run against him, and that's going back nearly two, almost three months ago. That was April the 19th. Two and zero on Ryan Ludwig. Those Rockers got some serious sock. Oh yeah, that was a two strike swing. <laughs> Zarocco now 16 home runs on the year, 44 runs batted in. And that's ball three to Ryan Ludwig. And wasn't just throwing 3 0 gas here down the middle. He just laid it right in there. 88 miles an hour. 3 and 1. And a little number. This has a chance to fall in. It will. So 
So now you have the tying run on at first, and you have the go-ahead run coming to the plate. Got that one in on Ludwig, but it didn't quite have the velocity of the previous pitches. That pitch was only 89 miles an hour. Watson had to take something off to get it over the plate. So now Heisey, who has struck out, tapped out to the mound, and rolled out in front of the plate. The catcher threw him out. Pitch on the way. And it's lined in the left field. That'll be a base hit. The tying run now into scoring position. The go-ahead run aboard. Still two away here in the Reds' eighth inning of a one-run game. This eighth inning belongs to Watson no matter what. They are not going to give the ball to Frieri here tonight. And now Ramon Santiago. He knocked in a run with a double his last time up. And he started two and laid off a strike. Two hits tonight for Santiago. He has seven hits in his last 12 at bats with three doubles and three runs batted in. Does he have another one in him here tonight? Santiago has seen Watson twice in his career. He has one hit in two at bats. Well, you have to hope that Ludwig gets a good jump on any ball that gets into the outfield. Well, he had a good swing at that pitch, fouled it straight back over the screen and out of play. And now Watson ahead of Santiago in one ball, two strikes. Watson retired the first two in the inning before giving up the home run ball to Mezzarocco. Ludwig and Heisey have followed with consecutive singles. Now a ball and two strikes. And a liner into center field. A base hit. Here comes Ludwig. And the run will score. How about Ramon Santiago? Four consecutive two out hits from the bottom of the Reds order starting with the home run from Mezzarocco well you talk about a comeback of comebacks well you couldn't feel better for any player on this team than you do for that man right there no, there is a more of a gentleman and a sweeter guy on this club, Cowboy. I haven't met him, and it's so nice to see him. And I'm certainly, I'm sure, uh, you know, expressing what he feels. He is really contributing to this team right now. Uh, you and I talked about it earlier. Opportunities, the injuries, you get a chance to play when you've been a, a bench player almost your entire career. And boy, Santiago has really shown up here the last few days. I mean, big time. Three hits tonight. And that means eight hits in his last 13 at bats with three RBI. Four RBIs, I beg your part. All right. Now, all of a sudden, you're looking here in the bottom of the eighth inning of the go ahead run standing 90 feet away. High as he can run. And Brian Pena, the batter. Ball one high. Certainly Heisey has to get as far away from the bag as Harrison is from the bag in case Watson throws one of these back to the screen. Watson has not had a ball game like this all year long. One and two to count. Popped up. 
First base side over near the stands and out of play. This is only the second game all year long where Watson has allowed two runs. The other came on June the 15th against the Miami Marlins. Heisey, Santiago at first. And a liner, the Reds lead! In the right center field! It is six to five! Reds, can you believe it? Ball supposed to be away, and it ends up back on the inside part of the plate. And all of these hits, Tom, have come just right back up the middle. Everybody trying to do their small part to keep this offense going from one through nine. I, I don't know about you, Cowboy. I just can't believe it. I mean, this team with first two outs in the inning and nobody on base against this kind of guy. There are injuries that separate a ball club. There are injuries that bring them together. Tonight, the Reds are together. This is incredible. Incredible. And it's not over yet. They have knocked Watson out of the game. Three times here in the bottom of the eighth inning to take a six to five lead with two outs. Their first run of the game came on this, which got it started. Take a look at that on Fox Vision. How cool is that? You can see the missed tag attempt by Sanchez. Billy Hamilton got a hit, wound up scoring. But now he's batting with runners on the corners and two men out. And a fastball is taken up and away. Ernesto Frieri. He has had a rough year, not only with the Pirates, but starting with the Angels. 6.39 ERA. Boy, Hamilton had a pitch to hit right there and fouled it straight back. Naturally, Aroldis Chapman is cranking it up in the Cincinnati Reds bullpen. He's been a busy man lately. Chapman has pitched a lot here in the last few days. to try to give him a little breathing room with a base hit right here and right now. Thought about it, took a strike on the outside corner. Watson allows three runs in an outing for the first time since April of 2013. That was 98 appearances ago. 
Those are those ugly numbers for Frieri, the one-time closer of the Angels. One-two pitch. High and tight. This is just incredible. I know Brian Price talked about the come from behind five nothing game against the Cubs, but with all due respect, this is a pirate pitching staff that is a very good staff. Especially without, in the bullpen. Without Votto and without Phillips. Two and two to count on Billy. And a little dribbler. And the tag play at home will end the inning. All righty. Here we go. Chapman, who would have thunk it? A chance to close this game out. The Reds lead by a run. Nobody on on five consecutive base hits and they now carry after a two run seventh inning a one run lead to the top of the ninth and they're bringing on naturally their closer 19 of 21 on the year National League All Star again for the third time or all this Chapman looking to run his relieving string to 40 consecutive ball games with the strikeout. And that would be an all-time major league record. He is tied right now with the great Bruce Sue. All right, we got some changes here, uh, and we'll start in right where Jay Bruce takes over, which means uh, Chris Heisey will move from right to left field. Ryan Ludwig taken out of the game, and taking over at first base for Jay Bruce is the man who just delivered the go-ahead base hit, Brian Payne. Well, it's the kind of night where everybody has a chance if you can nail it down. And there's three outs to go in this one. But this is a kind of game where everybody can feel like they were a part of this thing. From Contreras to Curtis Parch. For Parch, by the way, would be his first major league win here tonight. Santiago, a big game. Pena off the bench. Heisey had a big base hit. You lose your hammers, this is what it takes. Everybody has to contribute some way, somehow. Right here in the Pirates ninth inning, we're going to see Jordy Mercer. We're going to see Travis Snyder. And then a leadoff man, Polanco. Although you got to wonder if Snyder or Polanco will bat his left-handed hitter. In fact, they already have a right-handed batter. Switch hitter, technically, Michael Martinez, standing in the on-deck circle to bat for Snyder. 0-1 oh, to Jordy Mercer. Coming right back with a fastball at 100. Back-to-back so -back fastballs, and this is back to Mercy. 
Mercer 0 for 3 has struck out all three times. He has walked twice in his career against Aroldis Chapman. Slider there, one and two, and don't look now, but the Cardinals are trying to get back into that game in Milwaukee, and there's a long way to go in that one. 6-3 now, Brewers. Ball foul back out of play by Mercy. It's Chapman's fourth game in five days. And he's still throwing a hundred and one. One and two to count on Mercy. Came back with a slider there at 89, two balls and two strikes. Well, the one time where they really pushed him to the limits where he had not been before was when he blew that save, only his second save all year long in San Francisco. But in the games even prior to that, when he was being used so frequently, Cowboy might have been throwing the ball better than he has all year long. Yeah, I, I think he is pitched. Better this year than we've seen him at any point in time in a red uniform. He's using all of his pitches fastball, slider, and changeup. Hey, Mercer, pretty good at bat right here. Two and two count. Six pitches in this at bat. I was told long ago from Hall of Famer Goose Gossage. Saves come in bunches, kid. Take them when you can get them. Two and two on Jordy Mercer. And Aronis Chapman has just set an all time major league record for consecutive games with a strikeout by a reliever. Tied with Bruce Sutter, and now the record belongs to Chapman with 40 consecutive games with a strikeout. You see those breaking balls starting out there and breaking back down and in. Mercer was fouling off the breaking ball, but tough to pull a trigger on a 101 mile an hour heater that splits the outside corner. Now Michael Martinez will bat for Snyder. And a first pitch fastball to Hunter. The strike one. They have another pinch hitter, Matt Hay, right handed batter. Standing in the on deck circle to bat for the left handed batting rookie Polanco. See Michael Martinez looking into his dugout and smiling. That ball was 99 and it was in the mitt by the time he got the bat into the hitting zone. Two out. Chapman put a little extra on that one. 102. Holly Mamus Moses and the Louisiana Bank. <laughs> well, now Haig will come up and bat for Polanco. They just brought up on Wednesday from Triple A's guy hit 13 home runs down the minor leagues this year. 
I don't know how many of those he saw. Chapman feeds off of this crowd's adrenaline. The louder they get, the harder he throws the baseball. And now ahead on two. Making my heart beat fast. This would be some kind of win here oh. tonight. Boy. Team right behind you, a game behind you in the standings. And now Chapman tries to put it away on a two strike pitch. Reds win. 103 miles per hour. A roll as Chapman fans aside in an unbelievable come from behind win. 6 5 Reds over the Pirates tonight. How about that, Cowboy? This may be the biggest win the Reds have had all year long. They hand the All Star Watson his first loss of the year. Looking to Mercer, swinging to Martinez, 103 to put away Hayes. 